Today on the first segment of 2018, the Cooligans have returned. There was was there a possibility that we weren't going to come back? <laughs> well, now, <laughs> now we know that we're yeah. here. So, uh, in the first segment, <laughs> we are back with the Heat, a brand new segment of Alexis's rage. We finally, <laughs> finally, he has an outlet to 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 get out all this pent up anger uh, in the soccer world because he has plenty of it to go around. Yeah, it was a surprise to me. But in the th <laughs> in the second segment, our only other segment. Uh, we're actually interviewing David Goss. You know him from ETR. Uh, you know Extra Time Radio, obviously. You know him from MLSsoccer.com. And now you know him from our podcast because we're amazing. And we bring on the people you want to hear from. So that and more on this episode of The Cooligans. Hey, guys. It's Juan Agadello, New England Revolutions forward and U.S. Men's National Team forward. And you're listening to The Cooligans. Yeah, baby! Hey, what's up, Come 2018? On. First episode <laughs> of 2018, and the first episode of the rest of your lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're uh, pretty, pretty exciting. Happy New Year, everyone! Thank you for listening oh, to what an exciting time. Another episode. I I just realized I said uh, welcome 2018, like the way uh, <laughs> 2018 uh, is here in the room with but, us. But the, the way uh, Robin Williams in Good Morning Vietnam. Good, welcome 2018. Yeah, yeah. Good morning. I I think, Vietnam. That, I think that Good Morning Vietnam is the inspiration for the beginning of our <laughs> podcast. That's right. Yeah. Because uh, we do have... We uh, yell. We just yell. And we have lots of PTSD. Tons uh, of it. <laughs> we oh riddled boy. with PTSD. And secret Asian girlfriends. <laughs> no one tell our significant <laughs> others. Uh, and they, and, or they might be boyfriends. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, never know. <laughs> but we, we welcome <laughs> all... <laughs> Types. Uh, we welcome <laughs> everybody. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, welcome, uh, welcome to 2018. Welcome, to, thank That's you it. for uh, supporting the Cooligans for uh, for another year. This is, uh, you know, we. I remember the last episode uh, being somewhat heartfelt, and you know, all the amazing things that are happening, uh, blah blah blah, and that have happened in the last year. Uh, and 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 I feel like uh, this episode is not going to be as heartfelt. This, we're this is we're, be we're shifting <laughs> slightly. <laughs> the tone is going to be <laughs> yes, shifting uh, 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 a very a very uh, uh, sudden <laughs> yeah. sudden turn. <laughs> the waters have become choppy <laughs> in this year's seas. Uh, yeah. So look. Look, we have to. We have to. Uh, well, first, my name is Alexis Guerreros. <laughs> my, my name is Christian Polanco, and together we're the Cooligans, yes, baby. We host the the Gullia Soccer Podcast on on the planet. Bang, 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 <laughs> gang, 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 gang. You already know. That's right. Uh, you know, you, we all, what them colors mean, Alexis? <laughs> you already know. <laughs> Do a bit about it, baby. <laughs> See me at your favorite comedy club. So, uh, uh, also, this jacket uh, did not fit when I first purchased it. And now look how loose it is on your boy. <laughs> so, all the fat jokes, uh, fat jokes, all the fat jokes can continue because yeah, your boy's not losing uh, that much weight. But whatever. Tr trust yeah, me, <laughs> Alexis is not juking anyway. Yeah, no. When I fake left, everyone's like, He's gonna it's gonna take like 17 <laughs> seconds for home and to go right, so you might as well it's just like, stand. In yeah, line. it's like a, it's like when Alexis jukes, it's a, like a, a truck backing up, a tr <laughs> like a truck, a truck making a K turn. <laughs> I'm like, no, that noise is letting people know what's happening. That's the problem with that noise. Uh, but yes, uh, 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 there's a lot of places to. to, to <laughs> We'll know where we're going to begin, but before we do that, how was, how was your New Year's? Uh, New Year's was dope. I uh, went to a friend's party and uh, offended everybody. Okay. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's every party. As I like to call <laughs> par for the course. Uh, yeah, there was just a lot of very sensitive people, and a friend of mine's wife told me that she's... Uh, She's they're going on vacation to Europe and the oh, end is, of the trip sweet. He's coming home. She's going to stay out there for an extra month, which already has a husband. I was like, what you fucking mean? You're staying in Europe <laughs> for an extra month. But <laughs> like, yeah, I didn't want to say like you're not allowed to. But I looked at the, I looked at the husband. I'm like, you need us to leave. Bro? Yeah. You, you uh, look at your wife. You're like, don't get any ideas. Yeah, none of these ideas. Are yours. <laughs> also, we can't afford Greece for a month together anyway. Uh, but she said she's staying there because she's going to build circus tents. For refugees, okay, who are trying Greece. to get into Cirque du Soleil? I was, what? <laughs> I was like, refugees of what? <laughs> Barnum and Bailey after they shut down? What you mean you build the in circus? <laughs> the displaced performers? Yeah, <laughs> a lot of sideshow freaks hanging out in Greece right now. I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. She said that yeah. apparently it helps assimilate the the kids. Yeah. She also said that they live in tents. 
I'm like, so you're just going to build a larger tent? I'm like, how about a home? Get these kids out of tents. Is okay. that possible? But yeah, those are like refugee camps, yeah. uh, essentially. But they will be in circus tents. I have an idea. How about a uh, a resume builder tent? <laughs> how about that? Where you I, can, I, I think the... You can get them out of these refugee situ like situations. I think the, the, the part that you were, I guess, what they perceived as you being insensitive towards... Was the whole thing because I laughed. I laughed uncontrollably. <laughs> First of all, just could you imagine... Imagine being somewhere and hearing the phrase, I'm going to Greece to build circus tents <laughs> for refugees. It, it, part of me was like, really, I don't think they want them. <laughs> really, the, the, really the, the word that stands out in that sentence is just, it's really just circus, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the circus tent. If you said, I'm going to build tents for refugees, I'd be like, I don't think they need your help. It seems pretty easy to do. There's instruction manuals on most <laughs> wow, of the tents. But, just <laughs> But, I mean, look, it's gallant, and I think it's amazing, but circus tents, they'd be like, so we don't get to sleep in the big one? <laughs> That's for face painting? Could you imagine someone from Syria who grew up, like, in the side of a mountain, you know, and you're like, no, 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 clowns <laughs> are a positive thing. Please stop I, crying I, you know, whenever the clown comes over. You know what? I, uh, you're... I understand the your your skepticism, <laughs> but your cynicism even I'll <laughs> accept you're, it. You're, you're still, I mean, on the on the side of like you're like you're the, on the wrong side. No, I mean, no, no. You're like it's like being not. Look, uh, my suggestion is not to not help the refugees. My suggestion you just, is you to just maybe look, make fun of people who are helping. No, no. no. Well, <laughs> is she really helping? Is the question <laughs> of a circus tent? How is that helping? I don't. I don't know exactly. I know we can I'm answer sure this. It's, I'm sure. I, I'm thinking. And then the husband said, "Well, it all happened when we met this clown." And I'm like, "You expect <laughs> me to not laugh I'm sure at any like of this?" It's like an activity to do, and there's not much to do at refugee camps. You know, all the kids don't have iPads and Xboxes. How about helping them get out of the refugee camp? I mean, well, then th that brings up the the, the it, then it, that's a, a a bigger political question of like where where are they going to go because a lot of countries don't do not want. Okay, them. how about this? How about we get a tent that helps them assimilate to Greece? <laughs> how is that? <laughs> okay, so you have different. You have I different said a ideas. resume building for the parents. <laughs> the parents like you're teaching my kid how to make a chihuahua out of air out of balloons. <laughs> We've never seen a chihuahua. <laughs> Could you help right, me so get a job? So you don't think circus tents are the most efficient way to... That's my thing. <laughs> to, I think helping is, is a wonderful thing. If she fine. told me she was going to Greece to build like homes or habitats for humanity, I'd be like, oh my God, that's a beautiful thing. You, and then you still would have found something to laugh at her I about. Have uh, yeah, because I also <laughs> said, like, have you heard of Detroit? Uh, it's a little closer than Greece. But like, the if someone said to you that they were going to Greece to build circus tents for refugees, I dare you to not laugh. I, mean, I would dare you to not I'd laugh. I'd have a lot of questions before I started laughing. I, I laugh that. uncontrollably. And if you've ever seen me laugh really hard, it's actually I'm very silent when I laugh. I just shake my shoulders, you know, okay. and I hold it all in. And I look over at a friend of ours, Jim uh, Search, who was there, a very funny comedian, uh, has a podcast about um, what's that show where they shut the bar down? Bar Rescue. It's a really funny show. Okay. Uh, I look over at him. In between him and I were uh, two artists, two sculpture artists. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, you have and to say they it both that way. had their That's hand how... <laughs> on their chest, <laughs> they and were... one of them had was mouth agape, <laughs> and the other one mouth silently O M G <laughs> because I was laughing. And might I add, the lady who's going to Greece also laughing. Okay, having a good time. All right, so. So you're offended on behalf of someone you don't even know because they were friends of friends. Hey, that's right. liberals nowadays. I, I mean, right. look at this garden. <laughs> <laughs> Snowflake. Get out of here. We're making fun of refugee kids with face yeah, paint on. All this PC culture. You don't <laughs> let me laugh at kids that are suffering. <laughs> Come on. Leaving a war-torn nation. Uh. If my mother came here from Cuba and was put, under, put in one of those tents and someone showed up, to show her how to paint her face and make chihuahuas out of balloons. She'd be like, get this golden now <laughs> balloon out of my face. Coño, abre la puerta para que yo pueda ir. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, now we, well, I guess uh, I'm, I'm glad we, I, I'm glad we sorted that out. Yeah. And, I, right. and I, I'm glad the, the. Well, how was your, how was New Year's? How was your I stayed New home. I know. I invited you to the party. Too cold. You could have been a part of this. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank goodness I was not. Uh, it was, yes, way too cold. Uh, I I was happy that I was uh, I got to avoid uh, the the 14 degree New York weather, uh, and I just stayed home uh, with my girlfriend. We played rock band, had a great time, and uh, 
And then, uh, then we built circus tents. How uh, about <laughs> how about building rock band tents for <laughs> refugees? <laughs> hey, that'd be fun. Come on, it'll make them feel better. <laughs> Much better than painting their faces, I think. All right, so clowns now, scare children. I don't know why people don't believe this. Now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> uh, we should start with the thing that uh, upset you. It, it, you. You almost got out of. 2017 <laughs> uh, uh, clear mildly unscathed <laughs> but no alexis he was he was he was like i'm it's, i'm so close to, you know the the, How can I? the ball was about to drop and it, and then you open open look, the twitter app i look around i'm like i think i could do something before this ball comes all the way down to upset an entire country of people and what ended up happening was uh england happened yeah uh, england <laughs> england being england just happened and uh, like i think we should show the video first because yeah, we don't we know that. so just to preface this so alexis was very upset with the clip that uh we're about to play for you and tell me how you're not upset about this we'll I, play you might have seen it on, I, on our twitter uh, look, we're already starting at the point where you presume i'm not upset which is which is look if you're not at uh, alexis level rage <laughs> then, then you're just not paying you're, attention you're condoning <laughs> yeah, all of this yeah, yeah, yeah. you're part of the problem <laughs> <laughs> which is like well can i process things in my own way no <laughs> stop wasting time and just accept what i'm telling you <laughs> we're ar we're arming ourselves <laughs> yeah. for, for the great just war. hold this Bazooka, man. <laughs> the English are being condescending. <laughs> okay, we, we need to go into battle. Uh, so this clip is from Soccer AM, and which sounds like an American show, but it is very much not. It is a it is a British show. On Long time running, from what I hear. I've seen clips of it before. Seems like a fun show. They do kind of wacky things. Yeah, is it on regular TV or is it like an online? I don't think show? there is regular TV out there. I think you have to pay for everything. I mean, who knows? It is on linear television. You have to put a quarter in your television. <laughs> your television. <laughs> Turn on. So the queen can buy more <laughs> jewels uh, <laughs> because because so, Indian children's blood doesn't work anymore since they gave that country back. OK. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Glad It's all about soccer, guys. <laughs> uh, so the this clip of Soccer AM, uh, 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 a show in England, it is a it is a I would say a, a, a comical soccer show. I would satirical. It's a banter. Banter it's a show. banterish show. And uh, Liam Ridgewell, Portland Timber. Yeah. Uh, Scottish. Scott, is he Scottish or He's British? Scottish? He's Scottish? I don't he, even know. Which is UK. Yeah, yeah. Scottish is British. Oh, Scottish is right. British. That's, uh, what, look, no, British no, 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 listeners, no. you, you British sort counts. This, some people that, get that very offended. You Britain know? is the island. Okay. So it counts. All right. So it's, Britain it's, is the island that England is Oh, on. that's right. Because yeah. uh, who was it? Uh, Andy, um, the tennis player that well, he he plays for like Great Britain when he represents yeah. in the Olympics. Or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. And he's Scottish. Yeah. Wales is British. Okay. Wales is on the island. All right. So, so uh, he's British uh, from uh, Scotland. Already confusing Americans. <laughs> and he played for West Brom Albion. West Brom, which Albion. For a while. Now he plays for the Portland Timbers. Yes. Uh, I believe he's a DP. I don't know. We don't know. Well, again, uh, we don't well check paid. facts. Yeah, I think it's well What paid. we do is react to videos. That's what we do. If you're British in MLS, you're probably doing all right. You're probably getting paid doing, a little bit. Yeah. You're doing just fine. You just feel the accent. You get a bump in your pants. And they're like, well, <laughs> this guy clearly knows how to play soccer. <laughs> <laughs> James Corden, DP for LA Galaxy. <laughs> uh, but so he plays for the uh, – so he's home. He's home, and they asked him to come on the show. Yes. Which a big moment for Major League Soccer. You would hope that he, he could be like uh, you know, an ambassador. A conduit. <laughs> to Major League Soccer. For American soccer. And we understand that there's going to be a little bit of, you know, a lot of people in England may not respect Major League Soccer. And that's fine. But Liam Ridgewell is there. And we would hope. So this is like, oh, well, good. All right. Which, yeah, he'll he'll speak a little nicely. His of home. His, where, the, everything he's wearing. His employer. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's signed off by Major League. Don Garber's <laughs> autograph is on his mortgage, okay? <laughs> or on his lease. I don't know how we live in. Okay? Uh, this dude clearly will be like, look, I know what I'm getting into. It's a jokey joke show. Yep. They're going to pop a couple jokes, but I may have some banter back Boom. or at the very least, maybe entrench myself a little bit. And I'm like, here we go. This is going to be a positive. <laughs> but this is what uh, transpired. Trans <laughs> transpired. All right. Uh, now, Jimmy's confused. Uh, we, it was a bit of a revelation from yesterday because uh, it wasn't it was it was it didn't really know how the um, the playoff system works. Let's just. Clarify, Portland, your team, finished top of the Western Conference. Go on, go on, go on, go on. But, 
But, Top of the league. But you lost to Houston in the playoffs, but Houston finished fourth. Oh, uh, so, Jim's you're struggling with I, it, are you, Jim? I still think you're on a wind-up. <laughs> so, basically, <laughs> how it happens, if you finish top of your league, yeah. you don't win the league. No, well, you win the league, but you don't oh, hang win on, the hang league. Hang on, yeah. Yeah. So what's You that? win the league, all you do is you finish the top two. Did you know that? Did You're you know that, Clive? <laughs> Seriously. It's than you did. <laughs> <laughs> I'll own up straight, I did not know that. Right, so if you finish sixth, Right, you've still got a chance of winning the league. We won the league. We won the MLS Cup when we oh, finished. I you're buzzing with that. Yeah, we were buzzing, yeah. So you really you don't be. want to finish top, you, you want to finish sixth. You get a trophy for finishing first. You get a trophy, yeah. Yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. And then obviously, so, you sort of obviously, get a trophy. If you, you finish, it, if you finish if you finish bottom of the league, you get relegated, right? No, no relegation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we can't, we gotta get out there, right? <laughs> <Seriously>. <laughs> you, you, you can get a job out there, That is unbelievable. I bet managers have been there since forever long, because no one's getting the ding, are they? No, no, not really, no. That's that right. Well has just left, but I can't believe. So, your gaffer, like, so you got to the playoffs and then your gaffer Caleb Porto left. Mm. You've been replaced by Giovanni Savarese. I think that's how you say it. Um, and what's, what's the new gaffer like? Uh, I've not spoke to him. Oh, what? Hey, hey, yeah. what? I've not, not spoke to him yet. You know, how long has he been he's there? In Portland, so, you know. Yeah, but how long has he been there? Uh, he's been there a while. Yeah, he's not get spoke to you. FaceTime, hey, like, what's up for? He's been there 35 years, he's <laughs> not got relegated yet. <laughs> Good. Okay. So I want to apologize for everyone who I told that that was a satirical show because there's nothing <laughs> funny happening there. So okay. I know they're not comedians. I they're mean, not. Is, I'm rubbing my face. This is very, very <laughs> difficult for me to watch. Okay, so this ended up, this clip uh, sent you on a tirade. Well, you were the first one to share it uh, from the yes. Cooligans account. That's right. And I shared it saying... And a very cutting remark. Yes, I thought it was, uh, you know... Uh, You're like, this says enough. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap it up. Put it in. <laughs> you put, put a, a bow on it. Put a beard at the end of this bad boy <laughs> and we good. And, and I was all like, right. bye, bye, bye. look at all these crumbs you left I, on the floor. I, I, hit, I hit tweet and I was like, boom, roasted. <laughs> Done. On, well, on with my day. Put this phone down. <laughs> Never have to look at that again. Why is it buzzing so much? A few hours later, so you this this sent you on an absolute tirade. You went nuts and you you shared it and and go follow at not Alexis if you want to see the exact. It went viral for thread. a long time. It was more popular than the clip. Um, I think they paid to juice it a little bit uh, just so that my. But I think I altogether I might have done like six or seven tweets in a thread, which two hundred and eighty characters is quite a bit. Um, yeah. So uh, so what this inspired for me. Was I, I was like, Alexis, and you know, we were talking uh, after you tweeted that you were like, oh, bro, I cannot wait to get on the podcast. But like, let's just talk about before we go to the, to yeah, the replies. Yeah. I mean, the, I think the thing, like, it, you know, it's we're used to being made fun of, you know, being MLS fans or being soccer fans in this country. I'm well prepared to be made fun of. I've made a career out of responding to being made fun of um, as a comedian. Um, I talk about soccer because I love it. All right. I'm, I'm not sensitive about it. I could care less. If you want to make jokey jokes, go for it. I don't care how corny they are. Like these so freaking corny, so <laughs> stupid, so hack, so old. So the tone, the tone is condescending. And you have a representative sitting there. And yo, you don't say a thing. <laughs> that's what makes it. That that's what I was the most upset about. I really thought I was like, they, I get that they're joking around, and that were that that was a lot of the the responses of people like, oh, what, they're just joking. Yeah, it's like, so sensitive. So sensitive. Yeah, and it's just like, nah, dog, you're making us look terrible. You're right? not. Because you not responding <laughs> is you co-signing. Yeah. to that tone. Yeah. And that, that, that's really the, the, the main uh, thing I was uh, frustrated with. And he was just sitting there like he couldn't respond. He couldn't explain. like uh, the With that <laughs> dumbass haircut. Is that hiding a lobotomy? <laughs> Scar? Are the playoffs Liam really? Ridgewell? <laughs> Are you not getting paid enough? There's people on your team making $60,000 a year. <laughs> Don't you not getting paid enough to just say one positive thing? Lie and say you spoke to Gio Severici. <laughs> Have some respect for the man. <laughs> so, so before you continue, I want and I want you to continue. But this, what this inspired was, I was like, man, well, Alexis, he's he's gonna go off next yeah. uh, ne on the next podcast. So, I wanted to introduce a whole new segment to the Cooligans. We have a new segment. We have a new segment uh, that I, I think is is gonna be uh, a fan favorite. Is, what's Alexis tweeting? <laughs> <laughs> no, not what Alexis tweeting. This is uh, uh, an outlet for you to really get your emotions out, get a, a, a safe space, if you will. <laughs> My wife's always wanted me to have one of these. <laughs> because, you know, you're too uh, arrogant uh, uh, and pompous <laughs> to go to therapy, so this is going to be the, 
the space for you. Well, we all know it doesn't work. <laughs> it's the circus tent. So. <laughs> uh, so welcome to uh, 2018 and welcome to the new segment for Alexis Guerrero's. Alexis. Se murió bien. Alexis. Hey! <laughs> Alexis Guerrerans. Guerrerans. <laughs> uh, if and look, uh, I should have had a stage name, and that should be it. <laughs> and if we let's just uh, hear the intro again, and just in case if anyone missed it. Se murió Fidel. Yeah. <laughs> Se murió Fidel. <laughs> so if you don't know what that uh, little clip is from, that was from uh, the uh, 2016. MLS Cup yeah. after <laughs> when we snuck on the pitch. <laughs> we, that snuck. We we, oh, we we had our press credentials <laughs> and we walked on the pitch and we uh, and you had a, a, a face to face with Ozzy Alonso. I was looking for two players, Nico Lodero because I'm <laughs> Uruguayan yeah. and uh, Osvaldo Alonso because I'm Cuban. Yeah. And, and, uh, and you I only met one, which was Osvaldo <laughs> Alonso. And by met, I mean chased down <laughs> and yelled, oh, yeah, uh, oh, yeah, coño, así. And he turned around. His wife was laughing already because who yells coño at a, well, at a, at a trophy celebration? Yeah. And I was like, se murió, Fidel. I give you another one. Fidel died. Here comes the Cubans, baby. <laughs> Everything this year. Fidel died. You win the thing. Uh, all right. Guerrerans, <laughs> let's do it. Uh, Guerrerans. So, uh, so let's let's. By the uh, way, if somebody wants to make music, yeah. for for this segment, yeah, I would have I would have uh, put together. So I didn't have enough time, but I that's could, fine. But maybe we have some music. If anybody have it, such uh, a positive photo for what's about to happen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yes, uh, Liam. Rid so this is this is the big issue, right? Liam Ridgewell is there. Uh, they, the, this guy, what's this guy's name? Jamie. Uh, Jamie Bullard. Jamie Bullard. I don't know who this guy is. From, he played for a while. From what I, from what I understand, from some of the tweets, a lot of uh, uh, British people were saying like, "Oh, this guy's a bellend or whatever." No, he's, he's a nonce. He's a nonce. So all this like, use words we understand. <laughs> I don't know. Yo, is he is he whack? Is he corny? Yeah, I know. Like, yo, this dude. Who is this? Is he fam? <laughs> is he not? I mean, I can't yeah, understand I don't, nonce. What, is this English? Because I know I'm speaking yeah. English. Nonce. I'm like, yeah, I'll take two. <laughs> not put a little bit of hummus on it you know what i mean seems like a good meal uh, <laughs> healthy snack <laughs> so uh so look and i wanted to be clear because again yes a lot of the people were and we'll get to some of the uh the yeah we'll get to some of the replies but a lot of people were sort of this. mocking us for being uh, uh sensitive about it but the the main thing is that and i and i think the disservice that liam ridgewell did was really misrepresent American soccer culture. It's not like, look, we can get into MLS playoffs and I don't get it. And those Americans are all weird. And you whatever. may not enjoy the structure. Yeah, that's fine. And that's fine. But it, it really did a disservice to like the culture of, of, of what American soccer is trying to to yeah. become by not defending it in any way at all. I, and also could, this insistence that we have to have 150 years of history in order to match your league. Your league was shit 20 years ago. The <laughs> uh, English Premier League go, was nothing go, but mud. Go Where am I camera. Yeah, go let's to go to camera. main. Mike, if you're there, put me in the main. <laughs> well, your league was shit 20 years ago. You, it was not, I, I watched it. It was not until Henri and until Zola uh, for, for, um, uh, for uh, Chelsea and until Wenger came in, your league was garbage. It was nothing but mud and dudes too big to play play the game bumping into each other and blood all over the jerseys. It wasn't a fun game to watch. What are you talking about? Everybody wants to act like Manchester City is what the entire league is. It's not. This idea, this idea that all of a sudden American soccer sucks because the quality is there. We're 20 years old. We're 20 years old. You're 100 years old. You should be better than us. We are 20-something years old. And look at how much the league has changed in the last three years. Now, I'm not, not, I'm not expecting you to say that in a comedic show, but this idea of, like, oh, they have playoffs. What is that? Homie. Homie, what do you mean, what is that? <laughs> what do you mean, what is that? Guess what, the championship. You yelling about promotion and relegation, which we both went on record as saying that we would love if it were to exist. We would love it. Are we there yet? No. But guess what? We're going to love what we have now, okay? My wife wants me to have abs. Guess what? She loves me now. <laughs> She knows I don't. I'm, I'm, am I on my way there? Probably not. You know, Don Garber told me not what, to. What's, what's going to happen first? Uh, promotion <laughs> relegation or you having abs? <laughs> but do not put your money on the abs, man. What is, what's pissing me off is this idea that all of a sudden we're, we're lower class. We don't know what we're doing. Look, did our soccer suck at one point? Yeah, does it still suck? Kind of. There's parts of it that I think would be great if it were better, but we're working towards it. 
Yeah. We don't have to be amazing right away. And I'm not expecting them to say that on the show. But, dog, you bring someone from the league, someone who gets paid by the league. You weren't even some – not a fan. Talk, you're a millionaire because of this league. And you can't even say one positive thing. <laughs> you can't you can't respond. But your friends don't give you a little shit about it. You don't already know what to say when this happens. And another thing, you invented the language. Say the X in the word sixth. Will you please? <laughs> it's so stupid. It's not spelled S-I-C-K-T-H. OK, there's an X in there. Say sixth. You all sound stupid and it's your language. <laughs> that, what you, you do, what are you wearing around your neck? You're wearing a muff? What is that thing? It looks like a donut around your neck. And you got a ponytail? No man, no man in a gray haired ponytail will ever disrespect me like that. <laughs> Not a chance in hell. Boy, you getting smacked to something. <laughs> gray haired ponytail trying to jokey joke about what I love? Nah, son. Well, all right. That wraps. Uh, that's Alexis Guerrero. And that's every- been a Guerrero. <laughs> I got so much more to say, but the thing that pisses me off is like it's the tone, it's these consistent jokes, dude. They're corny now. Yeah, these are that, new things. And, and everyone knows we don't have promotion and relegation. This didn't just happen. Yeah. So yeah, he and and uh, Jamie was he didn't make. I think the part that kind of bothered me was he was just like. Uh, the, the the it's un, it's unbelievable oh. that w- the, no uh, uh, they don't, nobody gets relegated. So it's then, a- no one must have ever been fired. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no one's ever been fired. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, it, it just it's just a. Th- this is sort of how I feel about. Um, uh, th- this sort of happens in certain parts of American culture where, like, look, being Hispanic. Sometimes, you know, there's parts of the country that are like, you better learn English or you're yeah. not. So it's just like, oh, we got to learn all your stuff. Yeah. But you don't got to learn anything about ours. No. And, and that's like, that's sort of what it, it, it felt like. Where like, there, there, there isn't this, you know, look, Liga MX is, is one of the, uh, it's, it's the fourth most attended league in the world. Yeah. It's so, an incredible league, especially for fan culture. Yes, and has playoffs, and it has and and, 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 and and the and the promotion relegation in in Liga MX is not it's not bottom three get relegated. It's a very weird system where like yeah, you it, have to. It, it's you, like a percentage points. Yeah, of, it has of, to be better than the teams that were in the bottom three or yeah, something but, but like it, that. It's like the the uh, it's like the, the team that gets relegated is the team that is the worst across three years, not yeah. not just one. Yeah. So it's like it, it's easier to stay up in, in in the league. Well, it's also no, it's it's hard to stay in that league. You can easily get relegated again because you have to beat teams that have been there for ten years. Yeah. Like percentage wise, something like that. Whatever. Look, we have it's trouble com- explaining it's it. It's complicated, and right? And we speak that language, bro. <laughs> so the the main thing is is that j- 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 suggesting that England is the is the only country that does it right, like where that's the standard. Yeah. And if nobody else does it. I can't believe I cannot believe they do it a different way. It's, what? It's just people wi- do it differently. It's wildly condescending, and that's the main issue we have with it uh, to begin with. Where like, look, you can make jokes, make jokes, have make jokes. fun, dude. If it was funny, if I would have been, I would have been laughing. Yo, you, you want if you want to, who like, who wants to laugh more we, than us? Make us laugh. If you make so you make fun of MLS and you and you and you're making like poignant jokes, I'm like, all right, great. This is yo, this is hilarious. We're having a great time. Yeah, like look at that. You look something up. <laughs> but, you want to make fun of the crew thing? Go for it, but but this this uh like frankly I'm just tired of like I'm just not going to accept this as a reality anymore. No, of like, also you're wish, allowed to talk down to us. I wish you put an eagle on this friggin' thing because let me talk to the American soccer fans. <laughs> How, especially MLS fans, like dog, I get made fun of in America for being a soccer fan. Now I got to get made fun of by other soccer fans for being an MLS fan. Yeah. Do we have anywhere to go? <laughs> and you expect my tone to be anything less than this? Yeah. You want me to be all of a sudden, oh, it's okay. I understand you're making fun of us. Nah, son. I'm tired of it. I get made fun of here. Now I got to get made fun of the people who understand me the best. Yeah. I got to get made fun of it. Do I have a home? Do I have anywhere to go to? Yeah. Cooligans. <laughs> That's, That's right. your home. <laughs> Like I do, you well, want to you want to know something uh, else that pissed me uh, off? Arms wide open for you guys, man. We're here. I'm to, not singing that stupid song, we're but we're, <laughs> we're waiting for the hug. Little, yo, you want to hear the Creed song in 2018? Yeah, <laughs> I, well, something else. Like I was, I was just, I happened to be on Reddit, which I should never go on. I happened to be on Reddit, and I went to MLS, and I saw people talking about their favorite podcasts. People were listing podcasts. This is on our MLS on MLS's subreddit. People were listing podcasts that don't even talk about MLS. <laughs> That's their favorite. <laughs> 
Which is amazing. Favorite soccer podcast. Could you imagine if you were like that's how that, we're like these what like these self hating fans? What, what I mean, it, what, must... when are you people gonna get some balls? <laughs> if you're fans of MLS and you laugh along at this, I meant what I said in that tweet. Yeah, dude. You're part of the problem. I'm not saying you shouldn't laugh at jokes. Laugh at jokes. That's what they're there for. You shouldn't get offended. I'm not offended. What I am is I'm awestruck that that tone continues. That someone who plays for the league was sitting there doing nothing because you know what? If you're one of those fans that's clapping along with that, laughing along with that, you would have done the same thing. You would have sat there like nothing, just sitting there going, "Oh, you're right. Oh, we have playoffs. Oh, it is wacky if a fourth place gets to win." Yeah. Sometimes that happens. Guess what? Fourth place sometimes beats third place in the championship and gets to go up to the Premier League. Yeah. Okay? That happens. And guess what? I see all of y'all. I see all of y'all uh, EPL fans out there wearing those NBA jerseys that three weeks it gets hot in your stupid country <laughs> in that shit island. I see you wearing it. Guess what they have? No promotion and relegation and playoffs. And all y'all pay attention to it. You're all wearing the LA Lakers jersey. I see it. I see you wearing the Chicago Bulls jersey. Lil Lonzo. <laughs> Lil Lonzo Ball. If you put it on Knicks jersey, I wouldn't argue as much. But then again, if you're a Knicks fan, you don't know that we have playoffs in the NBA. <laughs> that you do, but you definitely know we don't have relegation. Uh, it's, what pisses me off is that there's no one that speaks for us. And then I try to stand up for us, and they try to fansplain me. They tell me, <laughs> oh, those playoffs are group stages. What comes after the group stages, man? <laughs> just, you dumbass. It's, it's just semantics at this point. I it's, stopped responding. The only person I responded, I responded to two people. One person who said I was part of the problem. And I'm like, first of all, I wasn't making fun of English Premier League fans that live here in America. I was making fun of the guys that only cheer for that. The ones who sit at those pubs on Saturday morning yelling, uh, oh, say no. Oh, say no. I say, you don't speak like that, bro. <laughs> you don't speak like that, bro. You from Jersey. <laughs> Dog, you from Connecticut. You from Long Island. <laughs> Arsenal. Let's see. Yeah, look, I said it with an American accent. Arsenal. Arsenal. That's not you, dog. <laughs> Stop it. And you're not a fan of MLS. Oh, it's shit. It's shit quality. I don't rate it. Ugh. <laughs> you're talking like a freaking terrier that came to life. Like a cartoon <laughs> terrier. Stop it. See, the, uh, my other complaint is uh, with, with the, the, the English... Uh, uh, being condescending towards American soccer fans is the pr the Premier League would not would not be where it currently is without the United States without speak on it the support you don't have that contract your players are not getting that kind of money with, without the three hundred and fifty million potential viewers so. Th th All that, that NBC Sports money. That's not. It's not an accident. So, like, you want to You want to be condescending. You want to. Maybe you want to. If you want to, you could possibly turn people away from either watching your show, or watching the sport. But there's no point because the popularity of your league is a, a huge part of it. Is because of us. Yeah. And so, I don't care. I don't care about the two Robbies. I don't give a shit about what they say. I don't care what <laughs> happens on this stupid show. Rebecca Lowe. Beautiful to, to listen to. I think she has a great voice and she has a great tone. And actually, I think she actually makes the viewing a bit more She's pleasurable. Great. She's yeah. great. She's so good at her job. I could give a shit what she has to say. But they don't ever mock what we do. And I'll yeah. say this a goddamn again. Two dudes wearing suit jackets <laughs> with those stupid headpieces that you both sound like you're on a phone call. <laughs> I'm coming back to this camera. You both of y'all sound like you're on a phone call. I hear the tone you use. You inspire that kind of conversation. You sit here making money in our country, talking about the sport in this country, and you do it in a condescending tone. And I know some people are like, oh, you don't get the British humor, bruh. I watched Faulty Towers when I was a kid, okay? <laughs> I, I watched the, Monty Python. I seen Python. the IT crowd. Are you kidding me? <laughs> IT crowd, in fact, that's my favorite two episodes of IT crowd. I think are the two best episodes of a sitcom ever. If anybody understands British humor, it's me. I'm fine with it. I'm cool with it. I've studied it for comedy. That's got nothing to do with that. What pisses me off is I know when y'all being condescending. I know when you're talking down to me. And this little brother, bro, there's not that many of you. I don't feel bad. You needed us in World War II, okay? You need us now uh, to, to pump up. For, and make, World, for World War III. For World War III, which we are starting right now. But you need us now for your Premier League. Your Premier League is not even barely, barely, first of all, there's barely any English players in it, so stop talking about it like it's all that great. You got nothing to do with it besides paying them ticket prices, bro. You sitting outside in the cold, okay? That's all you do. I, this tone of like we need you or oh speak down to us i'm done with that that's why we started this yeah if you're an american soccer fan and you rep and you understand what we're doing thank you welcome aboard look at us look at us come <laughs> on christian show yeah and you I, I, I look love, very aggressive I, actually I, I just love, but you're, and you're also wearing an arsenal jacket I'm wearing <laughs> an arsenal, i actually wore this on purpose because i'm an arsenal fan 
Yeah. I don't want people to think I'm anti-English Premier League. I'm not. What I am is anti this tone. Who the hell do you think you are that you get to – first of all, I, I, I'm a, I, I feel bad for what I'm saying about Jamie Bullard because you're trying to be funny. You're terrible at it, but you're trying to be funny. It's frustrating to watch, but you're trying. The dude sitting in front of you, Liam Ridgewell, it's on you. How dare you collect the check and act like it's nothing? That's mad disrespectful, Judas. <laughs> okay, I guess uh, we know what the next Portland Timbo, Timber <laughs> Tifo is going to be. It should be. <laughs> hanging upside down. So uh, let's let's go into we we don't have too much time to go through all of these but let's go through some of the some of the responses from uh, from a couple people uh, and and look the majority were of just people saying like uh, you know get over it kind yeah. of uh, and we got this one from- it's a joke uh, you come <laughs> bottom you don't get relegated ha ha period you come bottom. <laughs> Only reason I put it in there so I could say those two words. <laughs> Stupid. Very just- we don't have promotion and relegation. What's what else? Okay, yeah. Like it's like we've heard it before. Yo, know, it's your house doesn't have a patio. Ha ha. No, homie, we don't. You're standing on. You're standing outside. <laughs> there's nothing there. Yeah, it's just like there's this uh, look, we it, it, there's this sort of this suggestion like if uh and which which I honestly do not believe where that if promotion and relegation uh, st- you know, started in 2018 in Major League Soccer. All of a sudden, everyone would start watching uh, Major League Soccer. It's like no, or you- that they would respect us. Yeah, it's that's not gonna happen. You, you, all the even the people that are demanding it, yeah. American fans are demanding it. You're not gonna if you don't like it now, you're not gonna watch it. You're not gonna watch it. Allegation. You so don't want to watch it when the level of play is greater. Maybe you'll watch it yeah. when we're stealing your players or when we're developing your players, like Jack Harrison, homie, which plays for the three lions in the U20s, the baby lions. He was good enough to develop here. Yeah. So, uh, so look. they're not gonna respect us. So I'm <laughs> so, not asking. I'm not cow tipping. I'm not shucking and jiving for these fools. Yo, if you want to make fun of us, go ahead. But guess what? You're gonna get called out, and you're gonna get called out by people better at it than you. Bro. <laughs> so, uh, so next up, uh, the clowning. This clowning is good. Uh, this is American, by the way. Uh, this kind of ridicule will help us make proper reforms. In my opinion, we could keep playoffs if that's what people want. But we do deserve ridicule if we do not open up the soccer system. We get it. <laughs> we get lots of ridicule. We understand that. Uh, but it, it, there's a difference between joking yeah. and, and making a poignant joke about the system th- r- uh, as opposed to you guys don't have promotion relegation and then just holding your belly and laughing at America. It's stupid. It's just corny. And, that, and, like, I, and I feel like I, I don't want this to get lost in like we're not uh, we are proponents of promotion relegation and 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 the future and this evolution of of american the game has to develop we want it to develop to that point but we have to start somewhere where like even if we're uh uh, trying to push our just because we're supporting major league soccer does not mean that we don't want it to evolve in some way you know it's just like that that seems to be like like we're we're uh, supporting like this t- this tainted product by by just watching it to begin with. Yeah, or we're helping its demise. No, not watching it makes it makes soccer go away completely. Exactly. And for those of you who are like, oh, but what about the lower leagues, homie? And NS- NSAL is damn near dead. Yeah. yeah. If it isn't already, yeah, USL yeah. is a part of MLS anyway. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so uh, let's go through another one. Uh, not sure why you are butthurt. I hate that term, butthurt. <laughs> Guys, you watched one show on Comedy Central. Can you pick up a different? Yeah, you, per, you prefer you, you prefer come bottom. Come bottom. I mean, I I am certainly come bottom, especially after New Year's. It was a wild night. But you guys can't. You really just have to like steal a uh, fucking. Uh, I'm sorry, steal terms from uh, from workaholics. You. I'm not sure why you're butthurt about it. They're not the only ones that laugh at MLS. Yeah. You guys do. <laughs> you guys do. American soccer fans that don't watch MLS. Um, our very own people in our country. Yes, even uh, U.S. soccer fans laugh at MLS. I said that already. Uh, the TV <laughs> ratings show it, and they're including how many people show up foreign uh, for foreign uh, clubs and international teams. Bro, we're an international country. We have a lot of people. We have tons of immigrants living here or people from other countries that want to see their own countries yeah. uh, play. <laughs> so shut the hell up. And second of all, uh, uh, the TV ratings show it. Uh, Taylor Twelman has a great rant about the TV ratings. You don't know how to read them is all I'm going to say. <laughs> also, I don't want to get uh, yelled at this guy too too much because he has a uh, assault rifle in his, yeah, his, his, his yeah, profile his phone. Is, is. <laughs> we just want you to know. But first of all, soccer, and then he has every shade of the yeah. peace emoji, but then it's he like also <laughs> looks very much like he carries a tiki torch. 
So I'm not exactly sure what no, to say. No, 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 I'm sure he's a good person. I'm very confused. <laughs> I'm very confused. <laughs> but there's a lot. There's just a lot going on. All right. Uh, so. This reeks of white privilege. This is one of the ones this I had to respond to. This was one of to. the weird ones. <laughs> I had to respond to this. Yes, yes. This reeks of white privilege. What about the Latinos overworked in low wage work? Do you think they have the time and resources to do that? And by that, he was responding to me suggesting that if you want the culture of soccer to change, you have to be a part of it for it to change. You have to become a part of the conversation. Go do something about it. And I didn't mean go buy your own club, you idiot. <laughs> Boca Juniors, NYC. We actually ended up having a great conversation and I responded in Spanish. Uh -oh. So the homie's like, yo, what you mean white privilege? <laughs> also, you're Argentinian. An Argentinian <laughs> telling any other Latino they have white privilege is one of the most <laughs> ironic things. One of the most moronic things yes. I've ever come across in yes, my the life. Pot, it's the pot caught in the kettle white. Oh my God. <laughs> I am. I was like, what? I was so confused. I look like a. I look like a robot that got water on it. I was like, I'm 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 All right. So yeah, that was. I thought this one was. This was the oddest one to me. Uh, That's so. Confusing. If you don't know anything about, it, they kicked all the black people out of the country. They are. They, they're. They're all from Naples, pretty much. It's all white people in Argentina. All right. So next up. Uh, this one, everything you just said is irrelevant as you called it soccer. Homie, you gave us the word. <laughs> it's your word. You yeah. don't like it? Guess what? Remember the clip that was being played? Was from a show a called Soccer AM. AM. <laughs> the word soccer is in the show and you watched it. <laughs> you dumbass. So silly. You cornball. Then the whole show is irrelevant. <laughs> it's, uh, well, this is just another just trope of like it's corny they, they just get so uh, it's just so frustrating that this is this is a a, a, a comedic premise yeah. to stand on oh they called it soccer well Blah. they don't know what they're talking about Blah, we got them it's just uh, oh look just not dumb is thing. there another one uh this one Oh, what? Other leagues are 10,000 times better to watch, unpredictable, unpredictable or not. Says you, 10,000 times? <laughs> yeah, this is what I mean. Like, this is even... like, do people say this like it's facts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> everything's, uh, everything's so much better to watch. Oh, <laughs> other leagues are 10,000. Really, bro? You watch the league in Fiji? <laughs> Really? Sure. <laughs> you watch the league in Siberia or Serbia? I mean, great, Siberia is a great part games of... over there. Sometimes, you oh, know? that Serbian league, man. <laughs> yeah. I cannot. I yeah. wait. I wait up till six a.m. every day. I got. I got that. That Fubo 180 <laughs> app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, you heard of the Go 90? I got the Go 9000. It's the only way you can get it. Uh, it's I, actually I, I included in the in the screen cap with of uh, uh, MLS John. This is at having a Johnny because he was supporting your statement. He was being supportive, right? Uh, of, Even if I don't completely of American agree. soccer, yeah. Yeah, he was just so he was just saying. Uh, I'll just read it quickly. People seriously need to get over this promotion relegation thing. MLS is not ready for this or even close. Until then, it should be put to bed. Two sides to every coin. At least every season in, in MLS has an exciting end where anyone can win. You can't say that about other leagues. So even that, that's a, that's a that's a point we can at least debate. We don't completely agree with this uh, idea that it, it, it th that it should be put to bed because I think the conversation should always be ongoing, especially about promotion relegation. I personally be believe it's the future of of this league uh and i think it's crucial and important to to its success so but we can but that's a, that's a point where you can just but i also agree with his point him being like the playoffs are entertaining yeah here's the thing there are some great games i'm, I'm not anti-playoffs i think when i started out watching mls i was against them i wanted a single table i gotta be honest it's kind of exciting you know yeah and also, you know, other other tournament like structures that are very, uh, you know, have large uh, spans of, of of real estate you have to travel over or geography you have to travel over. Do it as a knockout format because it's a little easier than that. Like, you know, the World Cup, man, I really hope those guys get promotion and relegation. So we'll start watching <laughs> the World Cup <laughs> because the fact that's what I, that's what that's what it's been missing. <laughs> God. I really wish they would get rid of the playoffs. How about this? A single table World Cup. Can you imagine the excitement? Yeah, yeah. So balanced schedule. So stupid. <laughs> Just back. You're all so very stupid. <laughs> and if you listen to this podcast and you're this dumb, thank you for listening. <laughs> so let's uh, go a, a, a couple other ones. Uh, this I, I, I don't know the original. 
Yeah, this this is talking about the playoffs. It really doesn't. The league suffers from effectively devaluate, devaluing first place by presenting its prestige no different and no position to positions below. All get a playoff place. They don't all get a a freaking playoff place. Uh, need more teams to have a relegation fight uh, and consequences. There's a fight to get in the playoffs. Okay, yeah. which is as close as we get to relegation fight. I'm not going to say it again. We don't have it. And the other thing is first place doesn't mean the same because we don't have a balanced schedule. Toronto was undoubtedly the best team last year. They did the triple. No one else has ever done the treble. But guess what? They didn't play the exact same schedule that Montreal Impact played or that Montreal didn't play the exact same schedule that NYCFC played. Okay? So there's no balanced schedule, so you don't know for sure. Does that work? Yes. Yeah, the balanced schedule lets you know exactly who's best. Yes. Do do we have that? No. Is it because we have uneven teams? Uh Uh-huh. (laughs) <laughs> uh huh. That's why we're still adding yeah. teams. We're, I, I, we're still. I, we can. We're not incapable of 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 some criticism of it. It's 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 just it's just this. It's 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 this idea. Like if you if you support if you support it, then you're you're about it and you hate about, everything else. Exa- yeah. And you're a part of the problem. No. It's just you're like, a part of the problem if you don't support. The, the what reason we're doing the now. reason we get so passionate about this stuff is because American soccer culture ha- constantly has to be defended no it, well, no i mean it, Isaiah, and we shouldn't it, have it shouldn't to. we shouldn't have to always defend it but we can't even start at a place we're not going we're not england we're not germany we're not spain we're not there yet but we have to start from a place where like hey we love this it's not perfect yeah but you we, we can't just say oh everyone's allowed to shit on it and it's fine it's like, all right, we all love the story of, like, Mark Cuban who went from not a lot of money to becoming a billionaire, right? Imagine someone when he only had 20000 was like, that's all you got? That's all you got? You, you ain't got a billion? Not, look. Bro, you might as well stop right now. Commit suicide, bro. <laughs> don't, even, don't even try, baby. Why don't you just go get a job as a bus driver? Because you ain't got a billion. You got to work your way up to a billion. Yeah. And that's, that's what we're trying to do. And that's, and that's what has to, sort of has to be done because we're constantly being... Uh, diminished and dismissed and, and and like knocked down yeah. just for being American soccer fans. This and by our own people. Oh, oh, oh boy. Do we have anything else? Yeah, yeah. Great example of a fan taking things. This is the guy that pisses me off. Kelvin Loyola, <laughs> an American dude living in Montevideo. I follow this guy. I unfollowed him because of this. Oh, because this oh, pisses me off so much. Great example of a fan taking things too seriously. He was kidding around. Jesus, MLS fans are the no humor fans. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> I explained that this was bad humor. Yeah. That's- also, look at my profile, people. Look at my profile. I say I'm a comedian. What are you talking about, no humor? It's in the profile. It also says that I'm Latino for the guy who said white privilege. What more? Just look at the profile before you respond. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, look, again, just more people upsetting Alexis. Uh, and this is this oh here last we one. go bang Look, bang bang little support from uh, from the homie a fellow Cubano Max Bredo you know him from ESPN friend of ours now <laughs> homie he's a homie yes we got we got matching tattoos uh, uh, he's a good dude. <laughs> that's what you do when you're in Toronto together uh, it says tired of it myself from treatment of Bob Bradley to this could maybe grin and bear it if it was German or Brazilian TV boom. Yeah. Hit you with it, meaning you're not that important, England. And that's exactly right. Look at the way they treated Bob Bradley. That's the moment I stopped. I'm no longer calling it a pitch, the way you treat Bob Bradley like that. I'm no longer calling it uh, boots. Guess what? They cleats now, son. <laughs> they cleats now. <laughs> I'm going to go to England and be like, yo, where I find these cleats at? <laughs> I'm like, saying it mad loud. I want everyone to hear me. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. What, what, do, you, what, do, you, yeah. what, do, you, what do you need? Also, exactly? <laughs> put a huge umbrella all over this entire <laughs> island. <laughs> It's constantly raining up here. <laughs> y'all soggy. That's why y'all so mad Yo, about what we got over there. Because some of our teams playing hot weather. <laughs> that's why you're so mad. <laughs> Max Bredos, thank you for the respect, my G. Thank you, sir. So that's it. That's that was uh, uh, Fidel? Alexis. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis Carrera, everybody. That's it. Uh, Ian, you know, look, did it take up a whole segment? Yeah, because there's nothing else to talk about. Okay. <laughs> uh, but also. I'm done. As an American soccer fan, I've said it on this podcast before, but now y'all seeing it in real time. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not going to take it from my own people. I'll, from them, if it's funny, I'll take it because sure. I get where they're coming from. It wasn't funny, so sorry you don't get to do that. <laughs> you don't get to do that at least without getting smacked back down by one of us, and it's not going to be him because he's a very nice person. It's definitely going to be I, him. I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to write a scathing letter <laughs> to he, you. He will write your congressperson <laughs> and let them know that that is not right. But, you he's going to get his quill pen out. <laughs> I, do, I do not want any conflict, sir. <laughs> Mr. Redcoat. Yeah, and he will put his fingers in his ears and wait until the argument is over. And Me, I'll, 
I handle things a little different. Sure. Uh, but yes, my mo- you will be hearing from my mother. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm tired of it. I'm not taking it anymore. So go ahead. Get your jokes out. Just know you're getting a response from me. And I want to thank everyone who retweeted it, liked it, or just shot me a, a message um, out of respect. That, that shows me that I'm not the only one who feels this way about American soccer. I am done taking that shit from you. Okay. Sorry, son. So, you know what? There, uh, this, <laughs> there were other things I wanted to talk about in the segment, but we do not have enough time to we do got time for it. But this, is, this became, I think this is an, an important discussion to have and, and, and to, to, to set this, like, uh, uh, maybe precedent. New year, new us. New year, new us. Uh, you yes, know? New year, new cooligans, all right? That's <laughs> it. We ain't got to take this no more. <laughs> We're going to put Mary J. Blige on in the background. <laughs> <laughs> we do not have to take this. I won't <laughs> cry no more. <laughs> we don't have to take this. So uh, let's end this segment and we'll go uh, to our next segment with uh, with our David interview Goss. with David Goss. We got David Goss in the house. <laughs> Unlike his own his own podcast, we ain't making him sit on the floor. Uh, this <laughs> dude gets a, a chair. We got a proper comfy seat for him, and we'll let him get a word in. How about that? <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry, we'll, we be in Doyle. I, we'll see about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so next up, uh, we'll be talking to da- David Goss right after. To this hey everybody thank you so much for listening to the coolings which is some break in real quick to talk about our sponsor seat geek they're back seat geek thanks for looking out yeah, for the right. cooligans that's uh, right baby <laughs> uh the seat geek obviously the the official ticketing partner of mls so if you look the, the season's going to be starting real soon but seat geek not only allows you to get tickets for soccer games, you can go to concerts, you can go to other you kinds go to of events, events. Other, other sports, other inferior sports. MLS just released their schedule. So you're looking up and you're looking around be like, oh, look at this. This team's playing here this week. Mm-hmm. Maybe you got season tickets to your team, but you don't have them away tickets. There's no such thing as that. So where are you going to get them tickets? May I suggest SeatGeek? That's and right. And let me also suggest you throw that word Cooligans in there. Guess what? Someone's going to ring your doorbell. They're going to fold up $20. <laughs> they're going to put it in your pocket. They're going to pat you on the face and they go, you're a good kid. Yeah. And they're uh, going to walk away. <laughs> we can't... Uh, uh, confirm that any of that is going to happen, <laughs> but we do know that if you do use the promo code Coolings, you will get twenty dollars off you get your $20. first purchase uh, on Seekix. Not so- percent. You're getting money. You're getting cash. <laughs> Twenty. You're getting a bucket. Not uh, not coins. Bitcoin. Real you real get cash. Actual money. Yeah, actual. Twenty dollars. It's not going to be worth seven dollars <laughs> ten minutes after that. It's going to be worth forty eight thousand five minutes after that, and then back to six ninety two. It's going to be worth twenty dollars. You're going to get twenty dollars in your pocket. That's right. So make sure to go to the SeatGeek app. Go to SeatGeek.com. Use the promo code Cooligans, and you will get twenty dollars off your first. Purchase, do that, and you will be supporting SeatGeek and the Cooligans at the same time. That's right. We get a little bit of scratch, and it lets them know that people are listening. It's kind of nice. Do it. Yeah, baby. Yes, we are back, and we are here. Yeah, with the homie David. Goss. Wow. Like <laughs> you know him from Extra Time Radio. You know him from MLSsoccer.com. You probably don't know him from IG because he doesn't stunt. It's what he told <laughs> us when the cameras were I put up pictures of baby animals, and sometimes people tag me in food. There you go. Okay. So you basically have uh, Ariel Castillo's Instagram exactly. account. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You're I'm a Instagram. cliche Brooklyn person, <laughs> yeah. girl. I don't live in Brooklyn, yeah. but I'm a cliche. Where do you live? You are in New York. I live guy. in Harlem. You live in Harlem. Yeah. All right. Very cool. All yeah, right. I respect Harlem. A little chopped cheese. Yeah. That's what we always You should have brought some. Um, <laughs> would be very nice. Oh, I don't want to talk about chopped cheese because it gets me in trouble. Okay. Yeah. We won't talk about chopped yeah. cheese. Don't get them at Whole Foods. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, for sure. Yeah. So <laughs> you are someone that um, people probably know most from Extra Time yeah. Radio. Uh, you do incredible work on mic there. You, you do great interviews. We heard a lot of your interviews from MLS Cup. Yeah. Uh, Jack Harrison and yeah. Kellen Rowe and whatnot. Kellen and Costa. My, yeah, Kellen Costa. 18 hour experience between De Rosario. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were so jealous that you got to talk. We hung out with his kids in the other room yeah. while you were interviewing him. Well, his kids all awesome. you had to do was reach out to him for six straight days and then wait three hours while he showed up. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, we his uh, his agent or rep yeah. was there, and he gave, gave us his email, and he's like, yo, we want to do this tomorrow. Never responded. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my life. Yeah, and he was yeah. like, yo, Dwayne said he's doing it tomorrow. Yeah, we're it, good. <laughs> be there. I'm not going to respond. Yeah. Uh, I've lived it, that. And then I see him the next day, and I'm like, hey, man, you never responded. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But it does What's feel. The it feels very Hollywood to somebody be like, "I got you tomorrow." Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> like, even you know it's not gonna happen. Yeah. Like, oh, oh my god. god, I think I'm really moving up. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's how I felt yeah. too. <laughs> they like were all into it. It was great, and I was like, "This is gonna be the best thing I yeah. ever do." And then <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my just god, just doesn't yeah. happen." <laughs> and then he shows up for us, and he's like, uh, "I gotta go." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you got five minutes, which is very Hollywood as well. I guess. Yeah. yeah, he's Mr. Toronto, that yeah, man. For sure. But like, where, where, how did you get into? How did you start working for MLS? Were you a soccer player? Where, what was your background? Um, I was like not good at soccer, played yeah. as a kid. I started playing late, right? Like 13 or something. 
um, my family's not, I guess you could say, of any ethnicity where we're like soccer fans. Yeah. And I guess it just like clicked for me. I think I really like like cultures and history and the travel and world and, and things about the world. And so like it was like a prism into that. Uh, my town was pretty diverse. So it's like you played on a youth team with, you know, South Koreans, Brazilians, Colombians, Peruvians, Germans. Oh, you had no shot. No, <laughs> yeah, not at all. You don't have a shot. Yeah. I was the one who had to yell all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Come on, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Michael Anybody Bradley. else need Gatorade? Yeah, sure. Your boy Goss got you, baby. <laughs> no, because like, the, like, the Japanese player on the team, his dad owned a Japanese juice company. So oh. we, they drank these like rando juices. Really? Yeah, I never really got into it. <laughs> yeah. I I, I love that would be a great commercial. Rando juices. Yeah. <laughs> rando juice. Who needs mango wheat germ? <laughs> Any oh. you kids out there playing soccer? Prunes and everything. <laughs> really? Prune flavoring and everything. Oh, you almost boy. the one because just the smell <laughs> of that. A little every time. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, guys. It's a lot, but I promote it. I don't remember the name of the company at all. So the Japanese dude in Long Island. Yeah. Juices. <laughs> just one of the yeah. guys. So I got into it there, and it, I like fell in love with it completely. I was a sports guy. I was an American sports guy. And then yeah. um, I guess technically I was an Arsenal fan as well at the beginning. Patrick Vieira is like my legend. There you which go. Which is why when I see people with him and when I'm – there's a picture out there of me recording ETR with him. And uh, I'm like, this? Yeah. <laughs> and my friend sent it out somewhere, and a buddy texts me and goes, I just wish any girl ever would look at me. Like Patrick, <laughs> David's looking at Patrick. Yeah, Harry. Patty Longlegs, man. And and first I time I met him, I'm like, yeah. I, I, I honestly like started touching him because I was like, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he's just so big, yeah, and you're like, he's there. Yeah. I remember you just controlling everything as an Arsenal fan in that era. When he walks into a room, yeah, you he feel it. Yeah, yeah. And he's such a soft-spoken like French dude, but he has this power of like a of an old army sergeant, yeah. you know. Can, well, can, I, 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 I was I, gonna say, can I tell you my Patrick Vieira yeah. story real quick? It was that he, it, it was one of the at the NYCFC like uh, city, city in, in the, the boroughs, boroughs like, yeah. meet and greet things, and uh, went up to him. And I was super nervous when I'm like, I've met him. this is the second time I met him. Right. I'm like, I shouldn't be this nervous. <laughs> but I was nervous because I was going to ask him if he would like to do the podcast. And I was very scared. And I asked him. He was, and he was like very polite, like, huh? Like, he didn't say yes. Right. Because he like, he's not going to do, do it. Not <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, you know, this will be like a very confident confidence building exercise for me right. to ask and get rejected. <laughs> uh, but then the, the media guy for NYCFC was like, uh, it, it, Patrick Vieira was like, hey, you should talk to him. And he's like, no, don't ask him. <laughs> yeah, do not. Do the, don't do this. <laughs> get away from him. Yeah, I can't do it. I can't do a Manchester accent. It was just a great. The first question no. I ever asked Patrick Vieira is, "Arsene Wenger in or out?" <laughs> first thing I walked what up, right up to He paused and he goes, "If out, then who replaces him?" And nice. I'm like, "Ooh, I know what that means." He's definitely said that a million times. Yeah, by the but way, but he's also. He's also pretty like open about him and Arsene yeah. not having a great relationship. Well, so he works for the city yeah, group, yeah, so yeah. that would make sense. Arteta's yeah. relationship is probably also ruined. With him. <laughs> That's but a good so, looking. So man, you though. just played a little soccer, but what made you work for MLSsoccer.com um, or just MLS? Yeah, I love sports and I enjoy talking about them. So I think I realized I wanted to go into broadcasting pretty early. And I kind of just fell in love with how weird the league is and how unique it was. And then as you get into it, I, I know you guys can see the same. Then you start to meet everyone else in it, and it feels like a thing you're a part of. Even sure. when I wasn't working for it and I was just a fan, just watching like MLS on FSC on Saturday nights. It's like, why am I not out on a Saturday night? Which <laughs> that could be discussed as well. And just like watching it on Univision in Spanish. I don't speak any Spanish. Right. Um, so that community I got into, I think I got into MLS because I was a U.S. fan first. So I got into the U.S. national team around 03, 04. That switched over to becoming like, oh, I should watch these guys all the time. Uh, took buses to get to Giant Stadium to go to Metro Stars games, which was miserable. Tough. Yeah. 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 And uh, well, the commute or the games there? Both. <laughs> both. You take a bus to get there. I went to, I don't know what happened. Well, I probably do know what happened, but I skipped my junior prom to go to a crew Red Bull game because <laughs> <Yes>. Scoloto <laughs> had just signed and Juan Pablo on Hell had just signed and they were promoting it as Super Classico, River Boca. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I was like, Gotta go to yeah. Super Classico. <laughs> At the Bowman era? No. Yeah. You know and I'm gonna, Metal Lanes. I'm going to stay a virgin, and yeah. I will go to this soccer game. I was hard on that path. <laughs> yeah. I was hard on that path. Just now the, everyone can know. Just a female hand touches your shoulders, you slap. <laughs> I'm going to Red Bull. I'm going Did to a picture of Hummus just go by? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is your, nah. I, that was yeah, based this on, is your Easter egg. That, Stop. <laughs> that was based, I didn't know. So I, I know of you through, I, I've met you. I've known you for yeah. about a year and a half now, but 
but I, I didn't know too much about you personally. Right. And then I, I was listening to Extra Time Radio. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll hear something specific about and you know, so I can put up on the wall. I'm like, oh, but God doesn't really mention too much stuff. Yeah, like, I don't like to himself. talk about my life. You also but, barely get that many words in unless whoa, you're doing an interview. Whoa. <laughs> What's harsh. going on? Yeah. Well, um, Doyle has a style of speaking, which is endless. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so once Doyle hits, like, you can feel the tracks, right? As he gets into the inner lane, which means he's speeding up, yeah. you, if you don't cut in, you're done. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. Once he's on, it's like, all right, I'll be back in fifteen, and we'll just move on to the next. <laughs> yeah. So I'm it, gonna go make <laughs> I'm gonna go make a cup of coffee. Your Twitter bio did say hummus fanatic. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? Maybe this will be fine and not, uh, you know, culturally insensitive. Yeah, as no. my <laughs> right. It's not an assumption. It's a truth. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought um, my girlfriend wanted to go do something for Christmas. Yeah. Clearly, I don't really celebrate Christmas very often. So we yeah. went to Rockefeller Center, and mm-hmm. I like had to like play it both ways. I was like, there's a really good hummus spot near there, though. So like, <laughs> let's go get Middle Eastern food, and then we'll go do that. Thing. Very nice. And uh, you know, send us an email or tweet at us, and we'll let you know which hummus spot he was talking about. Uh, anyone, don't mention it on the show. If anyone needs Sabik references for New York, I got you. Ooh. Wait, what was the word you just Sabik? said? Sabik? Sabik? Yeah. I know. I never, what it is mean? Yeah. fried eggplant. Mm-hmm. In, like, think of like a falafel sandwich, right? So hummus. The salads. Oh, I know we're talking about the fr- the fried ring of uh, eggplant. And then they put a hard boiled egg in. Yep. And they put it all in that, and it's perfection. There used to be like a uh, quick take place. It was kind of like a Chipotle, but like where it was Israeli. It doesn't exist anymore. I oh. forget the name of it. They give you you know those like little hats that like they wear it in and out. That's what they put the sandwich in, so it would yeah. hold itself up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember the name of the place. That was the first place I had that, and it was amazing. Taim has really good ones. Taim is dope. Can we get promoted if I say things? No, Can I no, get free fine. stuff? Can we get free stuff from Taim? If I got free food from Taim, I would talk about them all the time. And, uh, and if I got uh, like maybe just like I don't know a free drink at Balabusta just behind Taim, <laughs> which is their very expensive <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> I would love it. I yeah. think you're. I think you're the best falafel in the country. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I, had a, I had a feeling the hummus would inspire <laughs> a so food talk. Yeah. Yeah. there's nothing. Like Mizrahi food of that area is just uh, my favorite. I, I did want to ask. Uh, you know, I'm a food person <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I did want to ask about your. Uh, Sort of your your uh, style and your connection to Major League Soccer and the game because I, I I enjoy listening to you and watching you because to I, sincerely to me you you feel like this this Adam Schefter of Whoa. of Major League Soccer it's like Where, someone you know when they like, like they live mic of a coach it feels like they live mic a really knowledgeable fan <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean I appreciate right? that yeah I very much so th- there's this uh you know a lot of times when it comes to specifics of like uh, uh you know. Tam and trades and, and like a lot of some of the stuff like I understand the concept <laughs> right but, it, but <laughs> in a general in sense in a general sense I'm like yeah. yes money exchanging hands yeah. kind of uh, yeah. but I feel like I go to you when I want to make sense of it all nice. uh, and and I I, I sort of want to understand want to know like when did it get to the point where you felt like you were just a fan that was casually into it to like almost feeling like this expert of the of the American soccer game. Uh, probably about 10 seconds ago <laughs> was when, <I> <laughs> when you said it. <laughs> well, I think I was talking to someone over the break and they asked me a question about soccer and I was like, well, I'm not an expert. And then I was like, Oh, <laughs> they think I'm an expert. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I guess I am. <laughs> yeah. It was like a world cup question or something. And I was like, well, this is what you have to know. Yeah. Um, I think that part of it is soccer and you guys talked about England a bunch already. So yeah. I'm not going to additionally bash on England because then it will never end. Right. Uh, they speak about things in generalizations. Yeah. Always. And I grew up listening to the fan. Like, yeah. that's who I am. So I think I bring a soccer knowledge with an American style of looking at it and talking about it. And that goes to me studying broadcasting. And when you study broadcasting, you're studying ESPN and Fox. You're not studying Sky Sports and BBC. But then you take that and you bring it to a different style of game because it's different. It's unique. And you, as much as everyone does talk about stats, it doesn't completely break down to numbers. So you can't go with the two and a half hour fantasy football style show where it's just yeah. breaking down Matt Ryan's numbers. Um, and then on the flip side, there's just a lot of generalization in soccer. Yeah. And people are like, mate, he just doesn't. He's not one of those players. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is like, we're just supposed to get that. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Oh, clearly. <laughs> clearly, I know what that is. Yeah. A lot of Venn diagrams. Can we get a lot more Venn diagrams? Yeah. I think part of the thing that, that why I think Christian and I both are so um, familiar with your tone is because um, it doesn't sound like you went to broadcasting school. Like, it, yes. I mean this in a positive. You don't come across like robotic. Yeah. You know, and that's is that something that you found along the way, or was that always a part of what you did, or is it because soccer tends to be a bit more of a relaxed? Yeah, it's more personality driven. 
also I broadcast games, so that's where I think where you I call use games that. for for uh, I, St. John's, right? No, I call Rutgers. games for Seton Hall, St. Seton John's, Hall. NJIT, the Big East, um, USL, MLS this year and last year as well. Uh, I do college basketball. I do work for the New York Liberty, which is like a couple floors away right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I do a lot of that stuff. The fans know we're above MSG, baby. <laughs> okay. We got that Chris S. Porzingis money. <laughs> wow, <dude. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we mean like what's inside of his couch cushions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which I saw on his Instagram. Yeah. And he's got some crazy couches yeah, in New York got, City. He's got a dope uh, apartment. He put up a video of him wrestling with his brother, and yeah. you could feel... 10 million people being like, dude, chill. Yeah, <laughs> We Not, need those <laughs> knees. <laughs> lay, lay flat, brother. Pin him. Count the three already. Yeah. Yeah. This, this oh, match is over. Yeah. It was brutal. <laughs> um, but I don't even know what we were talking about. Yeah, so I do a lot of broadcasting. So those are more clean, formal, um, That's robotic. where you do the business. And then for me, ETR is a chance to like chat and talk about this thing that I'm passionate about, that everyone else gets involved in. And so I think I can let go. Also... One of the problems was I'm probably bad at being the robotic part sometimes because I guess I just have a strong personality and I react to things very heavily and yeah. it comes out and it flies. And ETR, I don't have to rein it in. We don't try and rein it in. The point right. of it is to just enjoy it. How much, and this is something that people have asked us, and maybe you can't answer this, but how much how much are you guys have meetings beforehand? How many times are they like, all right, we obviously can't say these things. Does that happen a ton it's because it this, doesn't seem like it. And no, that's, I'm, I'm, this is a positive. Yeah. It seems like you guys are like, I'm like, wow, even though this is like state sanctioned radio, <laughs> you guys are like kind of going for well, it. Well, we talk a lot about MLS. So this yeah. isn't like we go on the podcast. It's like we have text groups. We're sending each other tweets like we're all talking about it. So when we get on the show, I think Wait, a I'm lot sorry. of it is wow. like they respond to each other in the group chat. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. wow. Well, what kind of relationship? So is this? we have <laughs> wow. we have one guy in our group chat who is a data analyst in soccer. I won't say what team or who he is, but I think we mentioned him on ETR a bunch. So ben Bear? Matter. No. Okay. No, I think, so I think Ben I... is the second data guy. Ben's not even the numbers guy in this ch- group chat. Really? The real numbers guy put all of the texts that have happened in the group chat, whatever iMessages, into a program that he did for fun one day casually and came up with like who writes the longest, who sends the most Like most characters per text, I respond the least, but I have the longest text, which I think is the most respectful style (laughs) to text. Andrew Wiebe, if he sends you a sentence, which is 10 words, it's 10 texts, that's disrespectful. Yeah, he's a blast. He's a blast texter. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, Like, oh, I think someone's calling me. You open up your phone. Just. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. He does. Does it drive you nuts? You know what? I kind of, I don't know where I picked this up, but I've started doing it myself over the last year and a half. I bet. I, I when I hit I hit hard and it's funny my my landlord hates text messages he hates it but we're we're kind of like we're cool with each other right it's a small uh, building I live in and uh, he was like send it all in one is all he constantly responds because <laughs> he hates the fact that his phone keeps buzzing dude I'll screenshot when Weeby's like oh I want to do this on Monday I'll screenshot it and send it back to him and be like. How many texts? Yeah. <laughs> How many yeah. texts? How do you expect us to function this way? Yeah. So part of the show is like we already kind of know where we're going. Yeah. The other thing is it happens so often, the show, that like you're kind of always in it. So it's like a Monday show, you finish, you're already in Thursday show. Yeah, Thursday show's already about to come. It's not that big a gap. Right. So like when we have a show like today, which is after the holiday break, there's a rundown, we talk about it, we bounce some ideas off and stuff. Uh, and there's more of the like, we're going to hit this, we're going to hit this. The other thing is, we do the whole league. I don't know if we be talked about this. People get pissed because they think we don't cover their team enough. There are no 23 teams in the league. Our show is about 50 minutes long. Yeah. We can't hit everything. <laughs> yeah. exactly. So we yeah. end up like, that's probably the most conversation is like, where should we allocate? What do we definitely want to hit? What do we want to make sure yeah. we don't miss? Because it's easy to just talk about Atlanta. Yeah. You know, because they have the most stuff going on and they have the largest fan base, so to speak. So it's easiest just to talk about that. And I pick the songs for the things and I like ATL rap, so. Oh, there you go. That's so, okay. My other question was, <laughs> who picks the weird stuff and who picks the trap? I pick the weird stuff. Yeah? yeah. And you pick the trap? Yeah. I Weeby picks a bunch of it when I get lazy and we bounce off each other. Weeby like explores random music on Spotify more and I listen to 90s hip hop. Okay, very cool. So, now I'm curious yeah. about, just in, in this evolution of Extra Time, how long has Extra Time Radio been in existence? Way Four longer years? than me. No, Four years, no, 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 no. So Greg Lawless and 
uh, Shep Messing did it like that's right before wow. MLSsoccer.com. I just existed. remember March to the Match. Yeah, March to the Match was on the West Coast, which that was, was Doyle, Doyle and yeah. Jonah, and then Nick Fershaw, who yeah. worked at ETR, went out there. Um, so it's been on for uh, it's been around for a while. It like fully pushed out and launched from MLS for the 2010 World Cup. Okay, uh-huh. uh, as their World Cup show, and then few, like moved over, and then I got involved in the summer of 2013. Okay. Yeah, uh, I heard in the last episode that you started out as a as an intern. Yeah. That was a joke or that's real? No, 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 that was real. I listened to the I was in college and I listened to the show and which is was hilarious because then you get there. How old were you when you were in college? You look every bit of 43. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and I'm definitely still going in that direction. Yeah. I'm not getting younger. <laughs> yeah. None of us are. No. Uh, <laughs> well, I am, I think. Yeah, no one, you are the youngest looking person here. No one invited you to parties because everyone's like, I think he's an art. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because he looks like my dad, man. I, uh, I actually had an experience in college where someone thought I was an undercover police officer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you got cop face. Where someone literally you. was like, don't open that beer and looked at me. <laughs> and I was like, do you want me to open it? Yeah. What's going on? You have to tell me if you're a cop, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the music stops when you walk into a party. <laughs> but, um, dude, your beard is so full. I'm in a jam. Well, the beard is like one fifth of the reason I look super old. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I this thing grows in two days. So if I shave, it's like I'm always. Shaving. It is impressive. Yeah, thank you. You do have subcontractor face. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> There's a comedian, uh, Sean Donnelly, who has he calls it manual labor face. He's the same. He says since I was in college, I've looked like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, I look like I'm here to measure the wall. There's that, or it's like a Semitic look, where it's like this guy looks like the propaganda poster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I yeah, definitely yeah. get that sometimes. Yeah, for for sure. example, my girlfriend's niece got a picture book of the Bible, the Old Testament. Yeah, mm. uh, She's about two, and they came up to a picture of Moses, and she pointed and said, David. Oh, really? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if that's yeah. cute. Yeah, dude, you get stuff for every oh, mitzvah parade, yeah, don't exactly. you? Every, yeah. Yeah. My, my wife f- gets it, too. Yeah. And they're like, sister, sister, and they look at me, and they're like, just you, just <laughs> you, just you. My <laughs> favorite is when they go, hey, are you Jewish? Because like, yeah. they want you to do stuff, and I go, no. And I look at them like, challenge me on <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because you know I am. And the dude's just like, man, come on. Yeah. <laughs> you and look he, like the pamphlet. Yeah, he's like, I'm trying to get my numbers up. <laughs> yeah, he just puts his hat on you like, yeah. come on. You know, I, I got to say, I, I just attended my first bris uh, this weekend. Uh, odd experience. It was, yeah. wasn't my bris. No, right. it wasn't yeah, his bris. <laughs> he did not get bris. I don't bris. know if that's how you say it. But, <laughs> yeah. but it, was, <laughs> it was interesting. Uh, it's a weird thing. It's a very weird thing. It's one of those things, and everyone has them, where you don't realize how weird it is until you attempt to explain it to someone <laughs> yeah. who doesn't know. And then as you're in the middle, you're like, that sounds weird. That's the wrong way. And then you're like, no, that's exactly what yeah. it is. That's when I just start going, I shouldn't have said any of this. <laughs> I should just not have okay. said now that. you're in it. So yeah, now yeah. that I'm, I'm, you know what, I didn't expect to talk about Briss's this episode, but it but here we are. Uh, you guys but invited me on. So. I did. <laughs> I did. This is what happens when you bring the gossip. I didn't want to ask because of Extra Time Radio and and your uh, being a part of it and and its its growth and now and because of the, uh, because of the podcast format and and this deeper connection with fans. Uh, I think about this for for our show as well. Where like, what do you feel like is your connection or even responsibility? Uh, to the fans because there's not many MLS specific yeah. podcasts. So a lot of times fans are, are, are this might be their only source for uh, Major League Soccer news. So what do you feel is uh, the responsibility of the show and your part in it? And just a reference, we talked about this in the first segment. I, I went on Reddit and I, I looked at one, which is always a mistake, but <laughs> I saw one of their podcast like segments on our MLS. People were listening to their favorite podcast. Other than ETR or maybe us, there, none of the other podcasts are even barely talk about MLS. Even yeah. even one of the ones that was posted a lot, they're very vocal about how they don't watch MLS games. And it's like, <laughs> what? Are, why are why you doing? This on you? <laughs> what are we? What are we doing to yeah. ourselves? So I would say the one that pops out for me is to make people a fan of the league. I think that there are a ton of fans of clubs right now, mm-hmm. and for example, not everyone's talking about MLS Cup. The teams that are in it are talking about MLS Cup. But the teams that aren't involved, the fan bases, the San Jose fans aren't talking to us about MLS Cup. Yeah. And I'm an NBA fan. I'm a huge NBA fan. Everyone's watching the NBA playoffs. Everyone's watching Christmas Day. So that is the gap to me. And what I feel that I can bring and that we can bring is we can watch a lot more because we have that time. And that's technically professional responsibility. 
and so we can help you because it's not always on, right? I can help you if you don't watch Houston Dynamo every week to at yeah. least know one or two things about them and know what you're getting involved in. I know that they have young athletic players. I know they're going to take guys one-on-one. Just to have a reference point to be able to get in a conversation, which is the most important thing. So it's like, no, I don't watch every Detroit Pistons game, although they're good this year. But – I know that Andre Drummond can't shoot a free throw and can dunk on anyone. Right. And I can at least have a little conversation, learn more about them, get involved. So that, to me, is the big step that needs to happen. And that's what I hope, avoid that we help fill. Yeah. And a responsibility that I enjoy taking on. Um, and it's a lot to take in. It's 23 teams. The league is huge. Yeah. There's so it's much getting happening. Bigger. Yeah, right. Yeah, and it continues to get bigger. Um, are you excited? Nashville's been announced. Yeah. Um, you know, this is another Southern team. I've been shocked by the response of the Southern, you know, Atlanta and Orlando. Wild. I know some people don't consider Orlando Southern. Um, are, you, are you surprised having started where you started in 2013 to where we are now? I mean, 72,000 people showing up to a game. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, it would have never. Yeah, it's more like 06, 07 for me where it's like, I didn't think that this was going to happen. Yeah. And. I remember I remember people talk so TFC obviously was a huge one that came into the league and like changed the league. The with, supporter culture there was wild. Right. The streamers. I remember that. That was like, whoa. Yeah. And the the seat cushions that they yeah. threw up. But for me, Philly Union was the same. Where it was like, oh, whoa, everyone's at Lincoln Financial Field. Because maybe that felt for f- more familiar because I was from Long Island. Like yeah. that was my world where I was like, I go to empty giant stadiums. Yeah. And now I'm watching this. And then um, whatever it was called when they first started, I think PPL Park. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you can have a soccer-specific stadium. Like, people can come. And that one, I think, gets overlooked probably because it hasn't ended the way Seattle and TFC has. For sure. You know, currently. And the same with Toronto, though, where you watched it. And so from there to here is the part that's really surprising to me. And you could feel it start to turn corners, but it's, like, really accelerated over the last few years. The last years. three years, when we started this because of NYCFC and we both became NYCFC, that was we were, we were always sort of fans of the league without actually being supporters of the league. And I think NYCFC's entry was like, all right, in our own city, something we can take part of going back and Did forth from shows. Did you guys go to Red Bulls? Well, yeah, I yeah. went, but there was I could not connect with right. that. You know, with with but that. But you're team. from born and raised in Newark. Yeah, yeah. You would assume, but I don't live there anymore. I live <laughs> in New true. York. You right. know, so what do you want me to swipe twice? It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Two swipes. <laughs> How do you mind? Uh, yeah, I, I, I had the same experience, and it was just uh, I would go, I would go to Metro Stars games, go to Rebel games, but I felt like I went into. Yeah, I saw Andrew Shue play with the Galaxy when he played against the Metro Stars. I don't even know that. Right? Andrew Shue was from uh, Melrose Place. Melrose Place. Oh, that? oh yes, 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 yes. He yes, played yes, on yes, the alley. They brought yeah. him in like every five minutes at the end of every match. So the, <laughs> Just the girls the would go nuts. Face, and yeah. I, like, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful curly hair. I went to a so heartbreaking story is the first Beckham Red Bull game was like sixty six thousand. The yeah, five yeah. four game. I was working my shift at Home Goods, and everyone else went, and they weren't MLS fans. So it's like I became a U.S. soccer fan, and everyone else, as we became soccer fans, you know, at your age got in on that and had their Premier League team. Yeah. And then I pushed into MLS and people like some sort of did. And I had one friend who was Guatemalan whose parents had season tickets and they would take me sometimes. Yeah. Um, and then everyone was like, well, we're going to go when Beckham comes. And everyone went except me. Wow. And it was hard. You were the one who you earned it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You were the one who was supposed to be there. And I went the next year and it like wasn't as good the next year. Yeah. I was yeah. like, yeah. Where's the 66,000 people? <laughs> yeah. I, I went to uh, Beckham's first uh, U.S. game when he played a friendly. It was England against Columbia. I was at that game. At Giant Stadium. Yeah. And that was... Uh, I that, that was the thing that was like, wow, I've never seen this many people at a, an yeah. American stadium to see a soccer game. And it, it was about... It didn't sell out, but it was close to... I don't know how many... It was like 60-something as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was incredible. And just the, the level of... Uh, like it was like a like seeing a pop star. Like girls right. would lose just losing their minds. So I went to that game as well. My dad got it for me for my birthday. Dope. Yeah, good job, dad. He's just, he's just like you got a dad. I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was like. Dope. He has a dad. <laughs> Hey, did I look like I could be? So, yeah, I know. Do you need one? I mean, honestly, if you're, you're like, younger than me, but I'll if, sit on your lap. If you're in the market, I, I could be wise at times. I mean, you want to you want to throw the ball with me so, a little bit? But yeah, so we went to that game and. I, you know, was in the mindset at that time of like Beckham's the good looking guy. He's not really that good at soccer. He's just like the thing that all Americans think they know because they know him. He was so good in that yeah, game he's so in good. person. And that was one of the first games where I saw that level of talent. So the first soccer game I ever went to was FC Porto Galatasaray, like, you know, the summer friendly. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And it was random. 
and we weren't as close. That game, my dad got good seats because it was my birthday, whatever. We get we sit up close, and like someone played a ball across field that Beckham took down, whipped in across that Michael Owen, I think, headed in, and I was like, oh. That's the other thing about him is he's really good at soccer. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he's not just gorgeous. Yeah. He backs it up. Right. First, I remember I was freaking out when Thierry Henry got signed with the Red Bulls. Yeah. As, as an Arsenal fan wearing it now, I freak out. Did I you per- go to the Tottenham? I, I did. I yeah. saw him score against Tottenham. I got almost got beat up by Tottenham hooligans on the that way. That stadium like, was empty for that game. But too. that's my thing. You guys are all talking about 66,000. Right. I'm like, <laughs> where the hell is everybody? Yeah. We got 28,000 seats. And I, I, that's when I started to be like, uh-oh. That was the moment where I'm like, I feel like, I can't, I can't bitch about there not being anyone there because I'm never there. Right. That's so that's right. when that's I true. that's when I turn and I'm like I'm gonna start buying more tickets as I get time to go to these Red Bull games and the fans and I just didn't really I was like this doesn't feel right to me yeah, this first, doesn't feel like I'm at the home. first soccer game I ever went to was uh, Real Madrid against Roma, a friendly at Giant Stadium. Nice. And this was Roberto Carlos. Yeah, that was like 02 or something. Yeah, I dude, remember that. This yeah. was uh, with Figo. I think yeah. Figo was on the team. Well, my Zidane. first soccer game yeah, ever was, was the 94 World Cup. So <laughs> you are at Giant Stadium. Years <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was a kid, but I got tickets to go. I don't remember it. I remember it being very hot. And I told someone I didn't want some block on my neck because I'm Latino and I was viciously summer. <laughs> <on my neck. laughs> I was like, bro, I'm Latino. So w- we did uh, uh, bring up Red Bulls. You did did work with uh, you, I don't know if you I don't think you still do but you worked with Red Bulls I don't know you, did you I call their USL games you call the USL okay so that is the only team in America or the continental US that I'm actually a fan of is Red Bulls too not the Red Bulls okay I'm a diehard Red Bulls too fan all right go baby Bulls <laughs> that's great so you gotta really? love something that's true you gotta have do you a have to not some... can you not pick one because of no I don't I'm not a fan of any team no but do you is that, is that on purpose <laughs> because of the ETR thing no or? so I it, it worked out that my family, all my sports teams are blood. They're not, I didn't select anything. And As opposed to Crips. Which, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Which I don't want to. I don't yeah. want to throw the sign up, but yeah, you know yeah, what it is. You will yes, know what it is. Yesterday I was driving and that Black Eyed Peas song came on, yeah. Where Is the Love, and they're like, Blood of the Crips. And you're like, this song's so old. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, so I didn't have a team. So I went to Red Bull games. I went to Metro Stars games. But pers- I've never seen a team win a title. I'm a Mets, Jets, and Knicks fan. So I was like, why am I going to choose to emotionally get attached to something else that's not going to be good? Yeah. So I didn't get locked in. And then I moved to Boston. And I did some work for the Revs like as a you know, college student and whatever yeah. and went to all their games. And I think for me, it was more U.S. national team. So I rooted for American players in MLS overseas. So I never really locked in on a team. And then when I started working – a, a, you're supposed to not be a fan, but I already wasn't of one specific team, and I thought it made it easier. Yeah. So there's teams that I, you know, when teams push themselves, I root for them to be good. For sure. So there's that, and then otherwise, I enjoy watching young players. I enjoy watching the league. Blah 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 blah. So you but saw no. that kid Armando play, right? Remember Armando? him? A, it was like Armando without the R. Armando. It was like three, four, five years ago, maybe he was oh, at RB two on Red Bull two. Oh. Amando? Yeah, real, real diehard fan. Yeah, for sure. Here. I was the broadcaster that whole season. Uh, you don't do you have that? a like last name or a human? Being? I think that's his last name, Amando. It's without the R. Amando. <laughs> I, I, this I, is the worst I'm podcast. The last <laughs> person you should be asking. Guys, I'm no. just put Amando. I don't know what else is called. That. Going back to that earlier point, I'm technically an expert on this thing. <laughs> yeah, I just think your pronunciation's off. Uh, no, Amando Moreno. Amando Moreno. The yeah. Red Moreno. Bulls kid? He yeah. never played for Red Bulls, too. He oh, left he before USL was a thing. The one at Cholos right now? At Tijuana? Uh, yeah, he went to yeah, go yeah. play. Is he that good? I was going to ask you if he's yeah, that no, good. No, he never played for that team because right. so that's the reason they have the team. I'm an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> but literally, that guy is the reason they have this Because he was incredible, supposedly, they lost these and they, then he left. They almost lost Juan Agudelo for the same reason. Because yeah. it's like, well, I'm not going to play. What am I going to do if I go to Colombia for Agudelo, Mexico here? Then I can get some playing time. So that's why the team exists. Yeah. Uh, but it's so much fun, dude, because they're kids and they don't care and they just like rip people. And it's awesome. That's guy. Yeah. That's maybe it's fun to so, watch. So uh, I, with you guys your, are officially invited to a Red Bull Two game next season. I'll, I'll go. Wait. Yeah, I'm happy to go. Yeah, Montclair uh, State University. Hey, so I'll get, go visit the fam in Newark. Get, give, <laughs> and then get the hell out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Given that connection uh, to Red Bulls, what was uh, you know we were mentioning NYCFC were, were, were the team that like triggered us into really uh, uh, like jumping into the league. What 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 was your uh, perception of NYCFC joining the league and that sort of manufactured rivalry yeah. or whatever which uh, came to light though <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i don't kidding. care about the manufactured rivalry we hear complaints about that all the time because we call everything a rivalry and everyone's like just because orlando and nyc came in the league at the same time doesn't we were rivals and it's like 
I don't know. I'm a Knicks fan. I hate every team in the yeah. NBA. You know, like I don't care. Yeah. And it's all moments for people, right? Um, so I was okay with that part. Being a Mets fan from Long Island and technically being an Arsenal fan, but not really like loving the idea of everyone being an English fan. The city Yankee thing I wasn't pumped about. Yeah. Um, like I wonder if that it hadn't been founded that way, if maybe I would have become a fan. Okay. Because like it would have been like, oh, this is a New York thing and I'm a New York person. Uh, it didn't happen that way because I was probably never going to root for something the Yankees owned. And then also I was probably too far down the road of I'm not really a fan of any team. Right. Um, but I, I was okay with that. That part of it, I, I didn't know how it would work. I didn't know how people would react if it would just be like a bunch of city fans here. You just show up in a bunch of sky blue during everything <laughs> Which you is do. what everyone yeah. did. Yeah. The first few games of that, the first like phase when that came in the city – I just remember being around, not on the four, five, six, just on the east side, yeah. and always seeing blue. Yeah. And being really impressed with how well it went. It was, for, for people who don't know, New York City is such an international, multicultural yeah. city that it's hard to, f- to see a lot of one thing except Yankee hats. Right. I think that's like synonymous because everyone wears it, even if you've never heard of and baseball. No one cares. And I think NYCFC <laughs> was one of the first, yeah, no one really cares. I think NYCFC was one of the first things where I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. It's like it feels like uh, like you're by the garden when a Rangers game is about to happen. Right. There's a lot yeah. of people wearing Rangers. It feels that way just in the general. Like a lot of people are like, "Hey, Manchester City, you guys are having a good year." I'm like, "No, it's NYCFC. They own a team in MLS. Everybody check it out." And I, just kept, I kept repeating that. My wife had, would be like, "It's had, a team in MLS." Like she would know. Just like, them a sign. Yeah, yeah. Them a stack of documents that explains the yeah. whole process. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but even back then, I was like, "Look, no eagle." It's probably a little harder now. But yeah. I'm like, "Look, no eagle. It's a team in." But um, it also helped that I could walk to the games from my. Apartment, One of the things that's happening. most frustrating, yeah. I think, um, as a fan, is that we see you guys do everything, so we never really know what you actually do. Do you have a title? <laughs> a is title. your job no. description just like a blank space? Yeah, I don't and have a like job title. And like Greg Lawless's signature next to it? Yeah, I don't, I don't have a job title. You don't have a job title? No. That's amazing. Technically, I'm a freelancer still. That's insane. Yeah. All wow. Right. Yeah. But I do everything. I work seven days a week. You do work a ton of different things. You sometimes are on the sidelines. Uh-huh. Like you very famously, along with Ariel, were uh, at Toronto when the famous uh, tunnel bust yeah. up happened. Um, I've refused to call it a brouhaha, and I hate the fact that <laughs> Andrew fine. Weeby continues to say that. I refuse to it's use like, a dude, lot of words you, that he what uses. What are you, like from 1930, bro? Um, <laughs> dude, that's not the first time I've had to say that. Yeah. Where I'm like, he does have sometimes t- like an old timey vernacular where you're like, yeah. What do you want, a steamboat? You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. Like, relax. Put, so, put the but, thesaurus down. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but then you realize, like, oh, he's from Wichita. He's doing okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is pretty good for me. We ESP. could have more of this. Yeah. <laughs> You've missed. So you were there for that bust yeah, up. You sad. had to be, you were doing other things. Is there any other moment where you were, like, at the game, but, like, you missed, like, a big moment or something, like, just doing your job where you were, like, at yeah. something and you couldn't be a part of, like, the big thing because you're doing so many other things? Well, so. Ariel was like, I was getting vlog stuff. I'm like, forget a bunch of vlogs, yeah. Ariel. <laughs> so this year, this isn't exactly an answer to this, but it's an unfortunate situation is my friend works for TFC. And when I went up for the Columbus series, I was mm-hmm. there like the day before I go to training, watch them in training. I chat with the Fox guys who came. So it was Katie with them, who I've done some work with, who's yeah, incredible. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was Stuart Holden, Landon Donovan, and then... Um, Rob Stone was there. I think John Strong called the game, but wasn't there yet. Something like that. Chatting with them at training. And then I go inside and see my friend and his former roommate walks by and goes, oh, I'm going to go play in the staff game. He was like, oh, I didn't realize there was a staff game until he goes, yeah. And then two hours later, I see Stuart Holden tweet that picture of him and Landon playing with Rob Stone in that game. And I straight up just had to be like, I want to play. And that would have been like the life changing moment of my you life. You would have played alongside Stu Holden and, yeah. and Landon Donovan. Yeah, but I didn't. <laughs> Instead, I went like back to my friend's apartment and like took a nap. <laughs> when you could have been passing to or catching or or a re- I guess accepting receiving passing, would receiving. be a word we could use. I couldn't. I couldn't <laughs> think of it. You don't Again, use your ESL, hands. Uh, ESL. Yeah. Everybody, uh, you would have been receiving passes from either I Stu guess Holden. So. Two legends, yeah. two American legends. And that didn't happen, and I will never have that opportunity. What position would you have played if you played? I'm a defender. I grew up playing center back, then I played holding mid, and now I play men's league and co-ed twice a week, and I pretty much play center back or defense, whatever. I don't 
be good at scoring or touching the ball, <laughs> but I'm probably the only person that goes up for headers. And yeah. then people are like, hey, dude, you're going to get hurt. Like, you shouldn't do that. And I feel like the like NFL player where I'm like, this is my only role. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If I don't do this, I'm not on the team. <laughs> I can't remember your name, and I see three yeah. of you right now, but let me have this. Yeah, this is what I have to yeah. do. So that's my role. So I would go up and win headers in the 6v6 game just to prove to land I'm like, dude. I got it. I, I'll give it all. He's like, yeah, you're crazy, bro. <laughs> so what is your what is your goal? We talk about we talk about this all the time with people that work for MLS because it's like so many things are happening. I don't know that you know what's coming down yeah. the pipe anyway. But like, what is your goal? Like, where do you see ETR? Um, I guess it all grows with the league, right? And the league growing. Personally, I just like to talk about soccer all the time and get yeah, paid to do it. Uh, at some point, someone might make me have actual responsibilities. So I guess I have to make enough money to afford those responsibilities and yeah. also talk about soccer because that's the key. Is that yeah. thing on the side? Uh, in terms of goal, I like doing play by play and broadcasting, and I love doing stuff like this. So some fusion of doing a radio show, doing a podcast, doing a weekly, you know, daily show, and then calling games at a high level. Everyone's dream is a World Cup, whether you're a broadcaster, you work in operations, you work as a waitress, you work as a player, you're a player. Everyone's dream is a World Cup. So that's the end goal for everyone. If I did that, then like I feel like I'd wake up the next day and be like, because <laughs> <laughs> um, I had like a list that, you know, in class, they're like, you got to write out what you want to do. So I like wrote out and I've like hit some of those, which yeah. is surprising because I don't feel like I'm I talking to us. It's clearly one of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. had to be one of them. Yeah. 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 I'll be like, when there's a comedy <laughs> soccer podcast <laughs> and when that podcast has a show <laughs> and they're in a really video, high end studio, yeah. 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 then I want to be on it. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the dream from day one. Well, welcome. Yeah. Uh, glad we were able to check out yeah. that, that, that list item. Well, uh, guys, keep fighting the good fight, man. Oh, also, when can we expect the Goss report? When is that? When is the Goss? podcast coming out. My own podcast. The Goss cast. <laughs> uh, I recorded a podcast on New Year's Eve at 5.30 a.m. with my best friend from college who really wanted to do it, and I don't think it was in English, so I'm still, <laughs> I'm still workshopping some other stuff. Yeah. Um, hopefully more to come in 2018. Come on. Uh, but we can all say that now because it's the beginning, and it's like, well, I'm going to accomplish so many things. Of course. And then accomplish zero. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yeah, don't set the bar too, too yeah, high. Right. <laughs> I ain't uh, losing this way, baby. Uh, David Goss, thank you so much for being on the show. We appreciate it. Appreciate it very, very much. Uh, make sure you uh, follow uh, uh, at Empire Goss yeah. on, on two S's. Yeah, on uh, Instagram and on Twitter. Is there anything else? Do you know why it's should? Empire Goss? I'm, Empire of Soccer? No, no. It's probably similar. Empire idea. State. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Because right. I, I, when I made it, I lived in Boston. And when I lived in Boston, I was always like, New York's the greatest place in the world. Yeah. Uh, Tiny well, little town they got yeah. up there. David. <laughs> Concrete jungle, guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> David, where dreams are made of, guys, <laughs> over here. Thank you so much for being on the show. We appreciate it very, very much. Uh, you guys, this is, the, this is the last segment of the show. So uh, This is it, baby. At, at the end, we always, uh, I don't know, we yell, you know, we yell the cooligans at the end. So, okay. So we'll just do that. So, so my on name is. three or after three? No, you'll, you'll, you'll know, know when exactly it. when yeah. to okay. do it. So, uh, Guys, that's David Goss. My name is Alexis Guerrero. My name is Christian Polanco. And together, the three of us are the Cooligans! cooligans! Yes!